Welcome back to another episode of FemFlex Friday. I am with Whitney Jones, Linda Murray, Whitney Fortino. I'm Camille Perio, and today we are getting so close to Mr. Olympia. Mm -hmm. We are gonna dive into the bikini and wellness divisions. Ooh. We're gonna do a little critiquing, predictions, and we have two experts to come on the panel with us today. We have Coach Adam Bonilla with Team Elite Physiques, and we have Johnny Styles of the Wellness Observer to help us break down these two classes. So, ladies, this is gonna get fun. Yeah, oh, we yeah. have some, to be steamy. It's we have be, some yeah. great guests to join us to talk oh, yeah. about these classes and break them down. We're gonna take a quick commercial break. Take get Adam on the show. So, don't go anywhere. Be right back. Welcome back, everybody. Before we bring on Adam, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to Olympia TV. And we have Coach Adam Bonilla with Team Elite Woo! Physique in the house. Adam, hello, hello. Yeah, yeah, Adam is great at predictions if you guys are already following his, uh, his channel and the bikini show that you do with Ashley Kalwasser. You guys do an amazing job. So let's talk about the bikini division for yeah. this year's Olympia. Yeah. Yes, I love the bikini division. You know what's good about doing predictions with the bikini division is that it's so it's so all over the place, no one holds you to it. So I can just kind of yeah. say whatever, and I'm like, I know. I'm <laughs> right. So like, he's, 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 so he's good at predicting. He only got, you know, five wrong. So. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> You're pretty good, though. I don't think you'll be missing five. Come on, let's be real. I did pretty good last year on my predictions. I got well, pretty good. Yeah. So. If he guesses the top for the Olympia, he five wrong. You did. You did a great job right. for the Olympia as far as the uh, predictions. So did you predict? Yeah. What was it? Marine to to do what she did. No, I think I had her in second last year as my guess. I think that was my bid. Wow. Last year. Wow. That's great. Year. You had Marine in second. I had her in second um, last year, and then uh, Jennifer repeating is kind of what I think of what I, what Wow, I well year. that's impressive. Yeah, yeah that Let's is. Let's talk <laughs> about those two, because that is like the hot topic of the year. So yeah. what do you think is gonna go down this year? You know what, this is a, this is a tough one, because you know, it's, well, it's, it's super subjective, and this is kind of an, an apples and oranges situation, right? Now, Maureen is really, really bubbly and really round, and that's what gives her an, an added advantage over almost everyone. She has the difference of um, bikini muscle. I like to describe it as having pretty muscle, mm -hmm. and Maureen has that pretty muscle. Her yeah. skin texture, her flow, mm -hmm. the roundness of the muscle bellies. She's almost like a flex wheeler of bikini. She's so round and bubbly, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And so I like to think of her like that where if you look at her conditioning, she's not the most conditioned on the stage. Actually, if you look at her conditioning in the top 10, she's probably 10th, you know, she's probably in that 10th. That mm -hmm. Jennifer is also usually known for being a little bit softer in conditioning too. So mm -hmm. Jennifer brought a harder physique last year and I don't know if that actually helped her or if it hurt her. You know, she was definitely harder in mm -hmm. 2022 than she was in 2021. You could see it on her shoulder capping is totally mm -hmm. different. Um, her legs are always her issue. You know, Jennifer's legs are always gonna be the issues. If she can bring in her legs, conditioned the way that it balances with her upper body this year and she's gonna she still has those round muscle bubbly um, muscle bellies too but Maureen has it all over she's very complete very balanced with those muscle bellies and her mm -hmm. conditioning is balanced from upper to lower body so I think that's the separator between the two of them is that Maureen's conditioning though she's a little softer has that those really round muscle bellies and is also conditioned from symmetrically conditioned too People talk about symmetry, but they don't talk about sym symmetrically conditioned, and that's going to be a difference between those two. Uh, yeah. That's key. That's so crucial because people don't talk about that. Sometimes they'll be really conditioned the front and the back right. side. They're, they're not as balanced. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and at the, when you're picking the absolute best girl in the world, you you go for balance from front to back. You go from balance from body fat from upper to lower. You go from mm -hmm. everything. You know, so yeah. there's there's no escaping the judge's eyes on that big stage. Mm. Wow. That seems something challenging to, to control. Like, how do you? I never thought about that with yeah. with bikini. It's like, tough. yeah, it's tough mm -hmm. as far you as upper what? and lower. And so, do you see a difference? Like, that really varies from like show to show, especially if they do ten shows or seven shows in that year. 
Like Ashley. You know, yeah. Like Ashley. Yeah. That's my, that was my first thing. Yeah. I was thinking about Ashley. You know what? Um, this is the thing. Here's the thing about bikini. Bikini is is an art form. It's a, an illusion, right? And that's what people don't understand about bikini. And that's why you see a lot of these like top bodybuilding coaches just are terrible at bikini, and they just can't get it, right? And they don't I got understand it. it. Like, and they say, hey, how do I how do I bring a girl in condition? What are the judges picking? What is it? I said, well, the, here's here's the first problem you have. You're trying to figure out bikini. Like, there's some 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 actual executable, repeatable pattern. This, that's <laughs> not what that is. Yeah. Bikini is an art form per girl, and that's the difference of bikini. Now, that's so and the reason well that I was, yeah, it's different. So bodybuilding, you know, the biggest, leanest, most symmetrical guy. Get him bigger, yeah. get him leaner, get him more symmetrical, and they're going right. to win. That's how it goes, right? Bikini, that's not the case, right? So let's look at, for example, let's take into account the conditioning from upper to lower body being off, right? How do we mm -hmm. do that? Well. You can't, you know, here's the thing about losing body fat. And this is actually something that Ashley always says. She says, losing body fat's like draining a pool. You can't choose where you lose it from. At the deep end of the pool, that water's going to go when all the other water's gone. That's the only way that water's leaving, at the deep end of the pool, mm -hmm. right? So for some women, it's the legs and the glutes. That's the deep end of the water, right? Uh -huh. So how do, you, how do you get, you know, Jennifer leaner in the legs without getting her too lean of the upper body? You probably can't do that genetically, right? It's not something that's gonna, gonna work. So how do you do it? You create the illusion that you did it. That's the only way to do it. And on a lot of these girls, it's creating the illusion to do it. And so how does that happen? It's, it's with posing and precise yes. posing. So, mm. you know, when you look at the best of the best, no one is perfectly balanced. No one is genetically gifted all the way up and down. No one is perfectly balanced in terms of their body fat distribution. Mm. So it's about posing and it's about, let's say, for example, let's just say, let's say Maureen, even though she doesn't have this issue, let's say Maureen had to, had, had really soft, had softer glutes than her upper body, and we needed to make her look like it, it matched in the body fat. Well, we just pose her glutes harder. We pose her harder in the back pose. We sit harder in the front pose to make her look leaner. You know, maybe we position her leg where it's a little bit smaller, and we put her quad more facing the front so it's more streamlined leg because her mm. upper body is a little bit bigger than her lower body. Mm. Or on vice versa, if her upper body is a little bit smaller, we turn her leg to the side to make her lower body look a little bit like it's more caught up to the, mm -hmm. the upper body. So it's all an illusion. You know, this mm -hmm. is all an illusion. You know, sometimes you have shoulders that are more developed than the arms, and you actually purposely make the arms a little bit out of balance to the shoulders mm -hmm. to make the shoulders look wider and make, but not get them too big for their, where they're looking like their figure. Mm -hmm. So it's all this like creative art form where you're kind of sculpting someone um, into it. And the best, I think the best bikini coaches are honestly like artistic people. I think that's, I got that, that's it. why there's oh, a yeah. Oh, yeah. It makes sense. So there's constant adjustment. Like if a competitor's competing in 10 shows that year and uh, she would make adjustments, slight adjustments to her posing, mm -hmm. yeah. she could. You know, and I it's going to be... And it's not just, and here's the thing too, this is what's really fun about bikini, is it's not just her making adjustments show to show, but it's actually making adjustments person to person too. You have to have stage IQ in bikini. Mm -hmm. If you're gonna be going against a Laura Lee who's really muscular, really wide clavicle base, and you're posing, let's say, and with a more narrow clavicle base, uh, with more narrow shoulders, you're gonna probably open up a little bit more next to Laura Lee mm. because you wanna be closer in comparison. You don't want her to dwarf you on the shoulders, right? Mm -hmm. She's got the, the biggest glutes in bikini right now, I think is Laura Lee in, in the bikini stage, her or Amy, right? And so when you, when you pose with her next to her, you're gonna sit a little harder into your glutes. So there's gonna be situational things too. You're mm. gonna have to have a little bit of more of a stage IQ. Uh, when Stage you're IQ. Against, I know. I love oh, it. Okay. Yeah. 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 So, Adam, we have the top five from last year's Olympia. Do you see things changing? Do you see any shakeups or any like wild horses coming up from this past year? I think I think Amy will be in that mix. I do too. Um, you know, I think Amy will be in that mix. You know, she's she's so here's the thing about Amy, right? She's the most muscular bikini competitor that's ever done well. Yeah, right? we've yeah. never seen a bikini competitor as muscular as her who's actually done well. You've seen bikini competitors who've been muscular as her, but they've never done good, and they've always been like, "Oh well, I'm going to go to wellness. I'm going to go to you know, I'm going to go to figure or something." Right? They don't. They just don't do well. But this is a, a whole new. This is a whole new thing. And when you put Amy in in the show, like for example, at the Pittsburgh show, when you put her next to everyone in the show, she looks like a different division if you look at just the body. Mm -hmm. But what, how yeah. she's winning is her flow, her stage presence, she's beautiful. Mm -hmm. I mean, she mm -hmm. just looks like a fitness model. But she is different than, if you look at all the girls in Pittsburgh, she's the biggest one. She's the hardest yeah. one, right? She, mm -hmm. She's 
She's just more dense, right? So it's how is she gonna do at this level against around there? Is she gonna be too different? Or is she gonna fit right in? Is bikini evolving that way where there's gonna be more of those girls doing well now because she's setting the, that she's trailblazing that place? I don't know. You know, so that's gonna be a really, really tricky Olympia this year because there's a lot of variances. Are they gonna go more traditional bikini? Because if you look at traditional bikini, Ashley really does fit that the best. She's got yeah. the best. If you look at her, if you look at everyone, you look at just balance. You look at balance alone, you look at that that conditioning that you're trying mm -hmm. to hit without being mm -hmm. too much, but still pushing it a little bit. Mm -hmm. You don't really see anyone who's more balanced than her. But out of that top grouping that you have there, she is the smallest one. Yeah. She's the, mm -hmm. she's, you know, she's probably, you know, she's the smallest one by a decent margin, but also probably the most conditioned in that group of mm -hmm. five girls there, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, but she's balanced and that's the yeah. thing and that's how we win shows and, and that's how she does so well. She's, she's balanced, you know, she's, she's really, really balanced. So yeah. um, that's what sets her apart. So what are they gonna go with this year? If sometimes, yeah. what, and it's, it's happened before where the division got so big and it got so far away from the actual definition of what bikini should be, yeah. they'll kind of re uh, hone it back again and say, you know what, we went a little too far, let's, let's hone it back again, right? This is where so, they do uh, it at the Olympia, right? That's where you set the standard, right? That's where you set the standard. Um, and that's what all the judges should be going off of as the standard is this year should be Maureen. You know, she's the champion. That's who the standard should be at all these shows. But you do run into those shows where there's girls who are way too hard or, you know, uh, when you look at Amy, she doesn't really fit the standard of Maureen in terms of the conditioning or the overall hardness of the muscle, right? You look at Maureen, she's got that really soft, pretty muscle. And that is so hard to replicate. And, um, you yes. know, when you look at Amy, she's got a little bit more density to her muscle, a little bit more grain to the muscle itself. When you look at the legs, there's actually a little bit of like hardness and grain to it. So what are they going to go with at this year's Olympia? I think she's has so much momentum. It'd be really hard for her to not get a, in that first call out. I think that she's going to get in that top five. Um, one of the shakeups that I'm really curious about seeing is, is Daraja in that grouping too. Yeah. The, the thing about Daraja is she looks really great, really full, really round, but her conditioning has been hit and miss yeah. um, mm -hmm. in previous shows. And her waist is wider than probably everyone's on that stage too. She does have that issue, especially when, and it doesn't show in her posing, but it only shows in the walking. So when she does the walk back, when they walk them from back to front, she gets exposed when she's next to someone like an Ashley or next to a Maureen with a tiny, tiny waistline. Mm -hmm. Next to an Amy, she would also get exposed there too, even though Amy's waistline is a little bit bigger than Ashley's, right? So um, that's gonna be her thing. Can she bring in that waistline? Can she nail her conditioning? You gotta remember last year before the Olympia, she lost to Phoebe, who, you know, I coach Phoebe, um, just a week before the show, and then she mm -hmm. beat Phoebe at the Olympia because she brought her conditioning in a little bit better at the right. Olympia. So mm -hmm. it's just a matter of her nailing it, her doing all the things she needs to do off season to bring her waistline in tight mm -hmm. on the in season, which people don't you know think about. The, how how you do in the off season is is going to be a, a predictor of how well you do on the in season. Yeah. And so is she going to be doing her homework this year? Can she move up if she does? I think so, but it's going to come down to her waistline and her conditioning. Mm -hmm. Well, Adam, one last question for you before we leave. Who is taking this year's Miss Bikini Olympia? Bum, bum, bum. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. Who it's is so Adam? hard because I coach, I coach girls that are in the Olympia. So I know. Like, <laughs> right, right. We real, he got really like, red. Put you on the like spot. A, he did get okay. red. Can I, can I say you who's going to win if it's right. not my girls? Can I say that at least? Because yes. otherwise I'm like screwed there. Okay. Who's going to win if it's not my girls? Okay. If it, who's going to win if it's not my girls? Okay. This is, this is <laughs> tricky. That's a good way. Gosh. Um, can Maureen repeat? I mean, you know what? I'm going, <laughs> you're saying no. no. no I think, I think, this is what I think. I think, I, I think, and honestly, this is someone that I don't think that anyone's really talking about, uh, or they're, maybe they are. Um, I think Laura Lee has the highest chance. I think mm. Laura Lee has the highest chance mm. if she can not overthink it. If she and can nail her conditioning yeah. and, yeah. yeah. Laura Lee burns so many calories by overthinking it. That's uh, Laura Lee's problem. Uh -huh. yeah. I think that's her problem. And I love Laura Lee. She's my friend for years and years. Well, so you used to coach she Laura Lee. Um, for a very short period of yeah. time. Like it was like a three month thing. Um, but no, the Laura, Laura Lee, it's, it's, you need a lot of time with her. Everyone who, every coach who's had her first time is like their first prep is always like their worst prep with her. And something happens in those last couple days with her before her peak week where she just like burns through calories. 
Like she just flattens out like overnight. Like it's crazy. Oh, she actually does burn calories by thinking. You, yeah. Like you meant that. Like, <laughs> no, I that meant was, it. Yeah, it's that was, and that's, literal. That's really she's, she. She. I, but I think she's evolved to the point where she doesn't second guess herself anymore. Now she really realizes how good she is and how good she could be if she just bring, brings the normal package that she just always has, right? Without trying to go through these crazy manipulations and just kind of show up. But her, her. Everyone's had an issue with her during those last few days, she just burns through calories. And it's, if you look up like the, the data, like they talk about how many calories chess players burn during a match, right? They burn a crazy amount of calories. Yeah. It doesn't make sense they're sitting down in a chair, but they're burning 500, 600 calories playing chess. Just I think she does that with herself by thinking it. This the, just the thinking of it, the anxiety of it, right? The show, big show's coming, right? The pressure of it, you know? Because with her, unfortunately, she's ha she does have a lot of pressure. All eyes are usually on her. What Laura Lee is going to show up? Is it going to be the right. first place Tough. perfect score Laura Lee? Is it going to mm -hmm. be the flat Laura Lee we saw last year at the Olympia? Is it going to be, you know, she's, she's going to have those variances. I feel like that pressure does get to her and it makes her burn calories. But if she could just realize, hey, I'm a two-time Arnold champion. Mm -hmm. yeah. I've beaten all these girls almost all the time, right? And, and I just need to have that confidence because I am that damn good. You know that show should be hers, right? Mm -hmm. It should be if everything lines up right. There's there's less that needs to line up right for her to win than probably anyone else. Mm. So. Well, we will have to wait and see. Adam, thank you so much for coming on yes. our set with us. This was such was a fun. treat. It was yeah. great. You were amazing. We'll have you on for the recap. Yeah. Okay, I'll do okay. it. Hey, you, I'll come on anytime you guys want me to. Just oh, tell yeah. me. I'll be there. Awesome. awesome. I love it. I Adam, thank so you much. so much. Guys, yeah. don't get anywhere. We'll be right back. People always ask how I got here. I was willing to work just a little harder than everyone else. Every damn day. If I can have hundreds of hours back, you know I'm gonna grab them. Spending hours prepping chicken, rice, and vegetables. F that. I rely on perfect nutrition. I rely on trifecta. Welcome back, everybody. Please be sure to like, subscribe, comment below. And now we're going to dive into the wellness division. And we have someone special with us today. We have Johnny Styles, the Wellness Observer, live with us to break down the wellness category. Johnny, Woo! thank you for being here. Thank you so much. I'm really honored to be in the presence of the epicness of the Female Flex Friday right here with all yeah. Four of you great ladies that I admire to the very best of my life. Thank you so much. Oh, I'm honored you. to be here. Thank you, Johnny. So you really know this division well. And yes. um, we mm. would like to have your help breaking down last year's top five and what the what you know what these ladies bring to stage, um, what you're seeing, maybe it's gonna be a mix-up this in 2023 Olympia. So yes. take it away, Johnny. Well, as we all know. This class is brand new and it's still evolving. Mm -hmm. um, I knew since the very start that, you know, five, six, seven, eight, nine years ago when I was telling people about it, I knew that if the category was ever gonna come back or just bring it to the United States of America, I knew somehow, some way, we were gonna put its own taste on it because that's what we always do. We bring our own little flavor into the, the mix up and we were gonna bring in a class worthy of, of course, the NPC and the IFBB mm -hmm. Pro League. Mm -hmm. So now as this class evolves, you can see that all these four or five ladies have some you know, similar straight uh, shape and structure, but you know, we have the reign defending world champ, Francie Elimazos, which has set that standard mm -hmm. for the female division, not mm -hmm. only in her shape and structure, but her overall physique, her makeup, her her hair, everything, mm -hmm. you know, she is the girl to beat no matter what, it doesn't matter, she hasn't done a show in the, in the entire year, she is the girl to beat. Place in here, you know, we have Isa Pereira Nunez from Brazil as well. She is like a, a miniature version of what Francielli kind of looks like. And a lot of girls do like her look. You know, she's very petite, very beautiful, but don't let that, you know, miss, miss in controlling your head what she is because she packs on a lot of power. Then we have, of course, the confusion in the world of Angela Borges, which in a way, <laughs> if you don't know, she was a world champion before in another federation. Mm -hmm. But this, my friends, is a very different world, very different league. 
And there is a debate going on because of these all five ladies, she has the least comparing shape and structure of all of them. Mm -hmm. Why is she up there? Who knows? I would love to have Sandy Williamson right here in front of me so I can ask her what does she like on Angela Borges that she's still up there in that top three lineup. But do I think she's going to be in there this year? I highly doubt so. Mm -hmm. Then we have Cassandra Gillis at, as you guys know, she won Canada. She won the Arnold Classic. She's right now Miss Wellness International, getting better every single time. She has put on size and looks really good. And last but not least, we have Ryan Fogal from Brazil as well. She is the hurricane. And in my book, she should be right up there with Isa Pereira Nunez and Francia Helimatos. Why? Because of all of these girls in the world right now, Ryan is the closest thing to a shape and structure to Francielli. So if Francielli is going to be number one, then you should compare her to the other girl that's closest as resemblance to her body-wise, physically, structurally. But that's going to be all done for the judges, and they're going to have her hands full because brand newcomer to the first place winner, as we all saw in Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh Pro winner Giselle Machado came in absolutely ridiculously crazy wow. so she yeah, will be she right there in that lineup as well so who knows let's see what happened yeah so wow. what do you think i mean i it's any 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 changes in the top five this year that you see happening in the top five i assure you right now something has to change and i believe angela Warhead has to be out of there and because mm. she is missing body parts like, and, can you and this be more is a class. specific? Can you be yeah. specific? And we don't have the backside shot, but we can add this. We can add this in here. So okay, what, what is what, Angela what missing? Question? Okay, so here's the thing: for wellness itself, that's a class that you know we have bodybuilding, we have fitness, we have figure, which are all you know judged on symmetry, right? So wellness is the only class that symmetry is kind of upside down. Okay, mm -hmm. we have the glutes, we have the hamstrings, quads calves, you have to count in the calves. Angela Borges, to this very day, has very suspicious calves. What does that mean? Does she have a tear in her calves? Does she have a tear in the glutes? There's body parts that are missing, meaning they're not there. When she walks, you can tell by miles that there's nothing there. How can you judge a person and put them up out there when I can tell the other girl around, hey, can you please train calves? All these girls that you have on screen right now, they all have literally trained the entire year. And then you have somebody with missing body parts placing ahead of them. It just doesn't make any sense to me. Mm -hmm. And I kid you not, right now, the girls that are winning all these shows, mm -hmm. Pittsburgh, New York, you know, Toronto Pro, all these shows, they all have great bodies and they're not missing any body parts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, calves to me would be very important. I know back in the day they would, it was so weird how they would always say, well, we're not judging calves. And, and I don't have great calves. I yeah. have high calves and I've always known that. But I always thought to myself, it doesn't make sense. <laughs> you know, because, and I feel like with wellness, because they have these amazing glutes and that, you know, quad and hamstring development, it would just be so odd yeah. to not like have that to yeah. have that you know your calves not balanced right. well there right. has to be balance i mean they they want to imbalance in the upper and lower body but the lower body has to all be balanced out and they could say i'm not judging calves but objectively they would probably choose a girl that has an, a balanced looking lower body over somebody who has no calves i would mm -hmm. assume right right but how, how can you be balanced if you have any if you have no calves right yeah. you have no right. balance yeah. And, you know, whether whether it's a genetic structure deficiency, like Linda said, you know, but still Linda trained calves no matter what. That's right. And when when Linda walked, you could see those, those calves flaring, yeah. meaning when they when they tell these girls turn to the back and walk to the curtain, you can see actual calf movement, calf development. With Angela, you don't see that. And if you go to the Wellness Observer Live on my YouTube, you can tell I posted it on slow motion for you guys to see. Now, does she have two torn quads, though, to, uh, excuse me, two torn calves? Then who knows? That's different. But more or less, there's a very famous bodybuilder, Dennis Wolf. Great bodybuilder. Dennis Wolf had some calf issues. That was, you know, 
muscle flare-ups that then never really came back to his physique. And he was upfront about it. You know what? My calves are never going to be better because they're, they're done. They're done. And then the judges came out and said, you know what? There's body parts missing. How can you judge the most important lower body class with a body part that's missing? Mm -hmm. So in my opinion, when you have four, five, other six girls that are training and they are complete, then you mm -hmm. can't really, you know, say anything about it because mm -hmm. yeah. you have a body part that's completely missing from your entire visit. Yeah, you can get away with like if you're the champion because I know Ronnie Coleman and Dorian Yates, they both, you know, in that same situation and, and myself as well. When the judges recognize that you have something missing or you you had an injury, you might get by that first year, but the second year, I think with Ronnie, it was, you know, his uh, lats in the back yeah. and I, uh, with uh, Dorian, a, a tricep, and mm -hmm. then with me, my, tricep, yeah. my bad leg, that quad mm -hmm. on my left mm -hmm. started to show up and it just, I didn't mm -hmm. have that fullness and there was no way I was going to, they had a good reason. Iris Kyle, she got first yes. place and I got second, so I agree with you in what you're saying in regards yeah. to Angela. We we know yeah. now what we're looking at. Yeah, yeah I, th right. I think with Angela though, at her when she's standing from the backside, even though maybe her calves are not as developed, her glutes are very dominant and they mm -hmm. really pop. So I think mm. that has been getting her to this where she's been at yeah. in her placings up till now. You're, you're, you're gonna make me be controversial here. So what happens okay. is her glutes are very, very, very full, okay? Mm -hmm. And this is something, this is not new, this has been her glutes forever. But if you go back six, seven years ago, her glutes weren't as full, meaning, mm -hmm. you know, you could see, for example, the, the world reigning champ and Isa Pereira and even Ryan, you can see there's some muscle flare-ups in there and that's, believe it or not, the judges do like that. They, ha they like that mix-up of hardness with softness, which is very hard to do. With Angela, there's some spots, especially in her quarter turns, when she's doing her quarter turn, she blocks, you know, her glutes because they look overly full. Now, that, what does I, that mean? I, mm -hmm. Actually, you know, you know I, I'll, leave, I'll leave that to yeah. the judges to know. Or if they don't know, they can call me. I'll straight up tell yeah. them. Yeah. But, but I saw that. Wonder. I saw that. I, I agree. The first year when they had wellness on the Olympia stage and it, I looked at Angela and Franciella and I was like, but it's something about Angela's, her, her glutes that just didn't look, I'm going to say, it did not look natural as as uh, the way the champ, way yeah. way yeah. Francella. So I agree with yeah. you. Yeah, now, it's, there's, it's, it's, we're all different and we all yeah. know the shape and structure, mm -hmm. especially you girls, you know the shape and structure of a glute, especially now when there's so many things in the world about glute training and development mm -hmm. and all this, that and the other. Again, five years ago in another federation where everything goes, then no matter what, but this is not this federation, this is not, that other people. This is a whole different world. Right. And again, I know we still have to teach the, the the ongoing looker to look where to look this side and the other. Yeah. But just like you said, there's one of these things don't look at the other. Yeah. And yeah. it's it's it very different. And then you know I get called a hater, all this and the other. And I'm not being hating. I'm just calling it like it is. Yeah. Ever since this category came on America, I made it my personal choice and my personal mission to make it the very best. Meaning if I see something that's not in cahoots with what we believe in and what we mm -hmm. should put out there, I will call that out because it's not fair. It's not fair to the girl that's training at home that wants to look like that. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not fair. It's just not fair. But Johnny, who do, again, you, who do you feel is gonna make it in the mix this year that's maybe a newer name or someone who is placing lower that's really gonna shake things up this year? The dark horse. Yeah. Oh, a uh, dark horse. There's there's many dark horses indeed, but um, in terms of that top four, I would say, you know, Francie Alley, Isa Barrera Nunez, Ryan Fogal, I would say Cassandra Gillis in there as well. I won't say Giselle Machado. Those top five will be really, really interesting to see. Can we have a mix up of girls? We will find out and we will see, but, Again, it, it, it's it's very powerful, these physiques that are coming up. All these five girls that I just mentioned, from the front and from the back, if they're on point, it's gonna yeah. be really, really hard for the judges to, you know, place them. Even even if Francielli comes out of, uh, you know, the very best, 
you can make Neymar top, you know, first, and then yeah. from second to fifth, it's gonna be really hard. Right. What I would say is that the girls that your guys are, are used to seeing in that top six lineup, they all are gonna switch one way or another. Yeah. Huh. This is one class that you cannot predict. Back in Linda's days and Ronnie's days, okay, top three, we know who's gonna win. Not anymore. Now all these all these girls uh -huh. are gonna be changing especially after you know what happened this last year that most of the girls that were in that first call out ended up out of the first call out yeah so mm -hmm. that leads me to my uh a question i have for you without getting into maybe too much controversy <laughs> but what do you think is going to happen and people are wanting to know because it's been a hot burning question this whole year is sunny, sunny andrew's going to make her way back up Sonny Andrews is going to make her way back up. Listen, I believe Sonny Andrews can make her way back up if she really wants to. She has all the tools in the arsenal to do what needs to be done in getting there. Again, it's going to be, it, it's, it's climb up. And she's, she's one of those persons that are, she's used to coming like from the ground. And, and, and believe it or not, a lot of people do love, you know, the underdog story. Mm -hmm. A lot of yeah. people follow yeah. her because she's been going through all this, that and the other. And she's one of those people that when people called me up, I called them Australia. I've been there with her in the gym. I've been seen, I, I, I've touched things. Things are there, you know? She's so good I, will be the, I will be the first one to admit like this is not real, whatever. But she does have, now, did the media pay, paid a, a part in, in her demise in a way mm. for a few shows? Absolutely, because mm -hmm. it's very influential. But when you see her on stage, she does have to get better at posing. She does have to get better at doing some stuff while she, while she poses. But in terms of physique-wise, she absolutely can get up there. And again, I believe that if she gets you know right on point, she does have the, the quality muscle to do battle with these girls. So I believe mm -hmm. so. I, I'll never count her out because she's very resilient. And yeah. you know, mm -hmm. this is not the first time she's been down to come back up. So you mentioned about posing and that's actually the thing that's interesting is you have seen this division evolve. You've seen the posing evolve. It has changed quite a bit just over the last couple of years. So what are your thoughts about posing? Like who in the top five is really setting the tone for the best posing? Who do you think needs to work a little bit more on their posing then that could potentially bring them up? Well, the posing, of course, have ch has changed. and. In reality, it, 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 you know, I kind of brought it up before the class was even in America because before there was no front pose. There was, mm -hmm. no, believe it or not, mm -hmm. this front pose that the girls do mm -hmm. is a pose that Francielle used to do. So they kind of brought her pose okay. and made it the first one. So <laughs> that that front pose with the leg front, yeah, that's her pose. And you know what? It looks good on her. And you know what? Let's pick it up with it. But again, you know, I like the other pose, the one that Issa's doing. I like that pose a lot. It yeah, shows me too. more me muscle. Too. I, I like that. I like that you can see the abs and all the things. But in terms of posing, I think, you know, there's great girls that come to mind when in terms of posing. Francia Limatos, of course, she is number one. Issa is great. I would think that um, so a newcomer, you know, Alexis Adams is really, really good yes. at posing. Oh, yeah. Mm. It's very, very, very pretty, very good. She just won. She's going to the Olympia as well. And who knows? Maybe she'll place. Um, in reality, when you are judging posing in terms of wellness, there is something I always tell all the girls in the world, no matter if I'm in Mexico or Puerto Rico or whatever, there's got to be a sensual side to it. Okay. Mm -hmm. This class was built on sensuality. Yeah. Mm -hmm. On bikini, you can still... You can still come up with, you know, being a little bit hard and this and there and posing and being cute. But in terms of wellness, when I do my play by plays and I see somebody like Francis Yelly come out, you can tell from miles away the, the sensuality, like mm -hmm. it will draw you in. So my advice to so all these girls will be like, even the up and comers in the NPC, when you're up there, you got to flaunt it like you mean it. You know, it's got to be very sensual. This is a class that was you know, brought up in our Latin culture. And Latin culture is very spicy, very sensual, very mm -hmm. happy, you know, all that jazz. So I believe that it'll still keep evolving, but, you know, there's there's twists and turns and there's a way to move your hip so it looks a little bit better. And if you don't move the hip a little bit better, then it doesn't show the full glute, 
you know, sensationalism of the glutes. So mm -hmm. I love it and it's getting better, but yeah, it's, it's an acquired taste. Let's call it that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, some people do that, that pose that Francielli is doing. So, some people do it really, really well, but I've seen a lot of girls mimic that and it looks very awkward. You know what I mean? It's a very, right. it could, it could, it's like a hit or miss kind of a pose. It's either right. looks awesome or it could look kind of awkward. Like if somebody's in a position where they're just, their body's not comfortable mm -hmm. in. Do you agree right. with that? So that's why, that's that's why I did that, you know, controversial video on like which really is the front pose. And I guess eventually, you know, the league decided on that front pose. But it's not really like you, you should not be able to just do that front pose because some girls don't know how to do it. They look very awkward, like you yeah. just mentioned. And mm -hmm. you know what? You can transition into the other pose, which is the one that Isa is doing, and show your development in that front pose. Eventually, I guess in some NPC shows, they've called it out. Like, oh, if you're posing this way, please pose from the, from the front or whatever. But, you know, again, it's an ever-evolving category, and who knows? What's going to happen, you know, in a few so years from now? So what's the official one? What's the official rule? Well, the so official one is supposed to be a Francielli's pose. Which I is see. that one that she's doing. I mm -hmm. see. But they, they, they caught that one. They caught that one. They said, okay, now everybody's going to do this front pose. Which in reality, it's her pose, basically. But I see. When she was doing it in Brazil, back when there was no wellness in the NPC, I probably, you could pose any way you wanted in the front. Hmm. But in her posing, to her defense... She looks absolutely fantastic mm -hmm. yeah. in that pose. She's yeah. perfect in that pose. Yeah. So another girl that doesn't even know how to do that pose, she could switch off to the side and do another pose and do battle with her. But now mm -hmm. it seems like everybody has to do that front pose that mm -hmm. she's doing. So mm -hmm. that's the way the cookie crumbles nowadays. That's mm -hmm. the way the cookie crumbles. Well, <laughs> I cannot wait to see what actually happens at the Olympia. And Johnny, we're going to have to have you come back for our post-Olympia recap. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be a lot of fun. It was awesome having you guys here. Uh, everybody, thank you for tuning in today on FemFlex Friday. We will see you at the Olympia. Let's see if Johnny's predictions are accurate. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Until yeah. next time.